Alright, it's kid time for our video today. We are bringing a sort of a different rig. This, uh, this is the Hots Katon 200. This is a Hots Katon 200, but this is the aluminum version. So, rigging this is going to be kind of different because of, of the bulk. Okay, so for this, we are going to be rigging it with a uh, size 40 Kanmaru from Kamakatsu, single hook. Although we could rig doubles with this, but a single would suffice, right? Uh, this jig moves around a lot and it slides longer. So you, you want it to slide longer and putting two hooks would actually make it kind of have double the chances of the hook snagging the body. And we're going to be doing a few things to mitigate that. Now, uh, this feature of this is obviously because of the metal being less dense, it is a bigger profile. Okay, and it sounds different too. Like even with the uh, with the split rings, it actually makes a lot of sound. So if you actually keep that split ring right there, it will act as a rattle, and it will actually sound a lot uh, more. Well, it gives off a, a bit of a vibration. So even if you don't have anything at the back, it's a good idea to actually put a split ring there so that it makes that sound underwater. It's just a, it's a nice, it's a nice lure. And uh, as you can see there, okay, there's bite marks all over this place or this thing. So fish will bite this. Now you'll see that here, there's bite marks here. And that's when the fish or the, the jig was actually sliding backwards and bite marks here just at the back that's also why i'm saying right here that the hooks should be behind the eye and we're gonna be rigging it like that okay if you're new to the channel this channel talks about the house and why it's sufficient we cover everything from big game ultralight everything in the middle including fly fishing and lately we have been trying to fill out as much of the jig rigging library as we could so that's that, all right? Um, we're gonna be going fishing soon, all right? But we have a lot of work to cover, so I'm covering this as much as possible. Now, the uh, cord that we're gonna be using is the uh, rudder line, the Kevlar, actually not, Dyneema rudder line that I have for my kayak. And if we splice it, it'll be too thick. Also, it's going to be still kind of too soft. So what I've done was to actually insert a 100 pound mono in this. A short piece It's all we need. And what you want is to just put it here to the side at the end, bring that. And we're doing 100 pound for a few things. One of the key things here is that I want this cord to have the uh, shape. That's it. And then, of course, the stiffness. Going over 100 is going to be too much. And going under that is okay, just as long as the uh, stiffness is there. But again, I'm, I'm doing the... This is actually soft mono, but it's still going to be stiffer than um, just the straight braid. So the purpose of this is just to give it enough stiffness. All right, so we're burning the end right there just so it doesn't move and hopefully that fused with the uh, braid all right so this is what we're gonna be rigging this thing with now put this here it's a massive hook all right and I'm gonna bring it in closer Well, we're going to be rigging it uh, a bit differently because it's just going to be a single strand piece. And it's going to be a very simple rigging. 
it's just gonna be a knot and a bind. And obviously, what we want is for this to be tight. And as always, our trusty pair of pliers can just pull that thing should be good to go right there okay now we'll bind that now again you can see here that is way more than enough for that and uh, we'll loop this on here and then I'll show you what we're gonna do all right so now this is fast this is a quick rigging also because of the sheer size it's very easy to work with okay so we are going to bind that well. Really torque that thing down. We don't want that. We want this to actually, actually you could get away with this being a bit loose because what's gonna happen is that because of the binding that we're doing here, as the fish pulls, it will tighten the knot. And that's exactly why we're leaving a tag end and binding, okay? So, see there? And today, we're not using a rotary vise just to show you guys that you can accomplish a lot with just this uh, fixed vise. And also, by the way, this vise holds the hook better. As you can see there, I'm torquing down and it's hardly moving that was already uh, quite strong there so I can actually torque down more with this vice and it's still from Griffin I think it's the mongoose the regular mongoose I'm not too sure actually but it's a uh, regular vice from Griffin and I like this jaw so that's why I chose this I think the mongoose is actually a different vice I'm not too sure but that is tight right there I am just making sure all right now we can tie our Tighten that sucker down. Okay. That's good. All right. That's clean. So what we're going to do is super glue that in a bit. But now we're going to have to deal with the uh, bitter end. So, as you can see, tying a knot there would be kind of that's a bit too small. So, what we're gonna do is, uh, hold on, let's actually do a measurement here. Yeah. So what we want is this to form an eye here, okay? And we're gonna do a bind. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm up to. All right. So this actually what happens here is that when we're binding this, the braid actually collapses. And it will. Now let me. Let me take care of this and then I'll show you. All right. So. Uh. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see right here that the braid still collapses. And the reason why we put the mono in there is to keep that shape, okay? And you can see here that it is still, and it's stiff too. 
See, it's not gonna be swinging around as much. So we're doing this so that when we put our super glue, it actually goes in and uh, goes into the, uh, the nylon. And the nylon, since it's plastic, and also the uh, super glue is uh, glue for plastic, it will have a bit more adhesion and it will fuse everything. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm loosening it up because what I wanted to show you was that it will compress. All right, so for now, we're gonna do this and uh, put a bit of super glue where we're going to be binding, all right? And when that happens, okay, let's get uh, tissue. So this is the uh, the more delicate part of the operation. And to make your super glue last again, wipe it and clear the nozzle before you work with it. Okay, so then. Let's go ahead and uh, put a bit of glue right there. Okay. I'm not going to put the cover on for now. So, all right. So, we're going to clean the fuzz out of the tip. So, there's glue there and it's already being absorbed. Okay. And what that does is it ensures that that part is already fused with the uh, mono and we're going to do the same here on this end all right it will dry up almost immediately and that's not the bit that actually holds things but okay i'm, I'm doing this with a small ring and it's kind of uh, difficult so let's hand hold this we ran out of big rings all right, so that's that right there. And you'll find that it's going to be a bit more rigid. And that's fine. All right, now what you do is just make small spirals enough to pull things in, but not too much. Okay, and there should be a lot of gaps right there okay so i'm gonna show you exactly how it looks like right there okay now we're gonna glue both sides starting with the top okay so as you can see there that is pretty bound up now we're going to apply our super glue on top okay and then now we're going to do the PR and what's 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 gonna happen is it will pull the glue into the uh, the inside it will apply it to the inside and remember this has uh, nylon inside and it will push the glue into the nylon and it will fuse with it so this is just one side that's all you need okay and then once we uh, we have done our cover we pushed some glue into the uh, the mono that's not gonna move that's gonna basically fuse things and the uh, see there we go that's a clean job okay now what we're gonna do is actually put more super glue on the outside to coat it so there's fuzz there take it off 
now just put super glue coat everything make sure the wraps don't move there we go and then we put some here as well this braid will actually absorb this type at least because it's loose it will actually absorb some glue let it pass through it's acting like a, a membrane of sorts all right so that's glued up now we just leave it for a few seconds to dry up before you put this away take your tissue clean the tip make sure that there's no glue left on top. If there's some uh, some glue that's stuck, that's dried up, just clean it up with your fingernails. You will get a bit of it in your fingers, that's fine. Now, store it standing up and you would be able to use the whole bottle, even without squeezing it. All right, so that's that. This is pretty much done. All we need to do is just uh, install it. All right, so I don't have a, a lot of patience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zap it with accelerant. Okay. Now I'm, uh, all it takes is just a, a squirt and then it's done. Now, what I've done there, going like this and spraying in, what happens is that it hits this and it then things actually bounce to my palm and then hits the back here and uh, you actually just need one zap and everything or one squeeze and everything dries up fast you're not gonna i mean you're gonna get these white stuff there it's fine i mean you know if you're in a hurry if you're not in a hurry to make it like really clean all you do is leave it in a place where there's no air movement and things will come out really shiny and nice like a top coat all right so there we go that's your assist hook ah. all right now let's go ahead and install it onto our keton and this this thing this moves really nice all right now look at that it's just where you want it when it's in position exactly where the bite mark is Ready? Okay, now that is how it looks like. Rigged right there. You can see it's where the uh, mark is exactly where the mark is and that will not tangle as well because our cord is a bit stiff there we go i i wish we actually had a bigger um uh what do you call this bigger cord or sorry bigger uh, solid ring but this is fine this is fine all righty so that's it hope you learned something uh, there's a few tricks in here of course and uh, honestly you could kind of use it for something else but that thing is just stiff enough and it will still and it doesn't matter if it gets cut inside by the way because even if it gets cut inside what happens is that it would just kind of uh, retain the shape we're not really after the uh we're not really after the strength of the mono that's inside now if you w were wondering why i'm actually doing this it's to take out the fuzzy stuff and you'll end up with a very clean cord right there okay 
You don't need to do it, but I, I like doing it just so everything's clean. All right. That's it for now. If uh, you haven't yet, subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for hanging out. Class is missed.